delivering his own material. We first heard of him when he appeared at San Francisco's famed Hungry Eye nightclub. Then he came on this program last summer on Talent Scouts. And we're delighted to welcome back... I'm reappearing here tonight on the Hollywood Talent Scouts uh, through the courtesy of the NAACP, uh, the National Association for the Advancement of Canadian People. <laughs> I belong to a minority group that needs an organization to help us because I remember when I first came down from Canada, I called an agent and I said, Hi, my name is John Barber and I'm down here from Canada. I'm looking for representation. He said, Are you white? And I said, Yes. He says, That's no good. <laughs> I said, I'm half Jewish. He said, That used to be good. <laughs> My, uh, my mother is Jewish, and uh, my father is Scotch. Uh, as a youngster, my dad said he could mix anything with Scotch. <laughs> when I was growing up, this arrangement caused me a lot of difficulties, you know. I, I mean, aside from having to eat oatmeal bagels all the time. <laughs> when my mother took me to synagogue, I was the only kid with a plaid skull cap. <laughs> You've heard me play Hava Nagil on the bagpipes. <laughs> hey, did you see in the paper last week, last week where five members of the Arab underground held up the Bank of Israel in Tel Aviv and got away with 100,000 in pledges? <laughs> but, uh, I don't have a great deal of money. Canadians don't have much money, but I allow myself one luxury in life. I drive an American automobile. It's a $15,000 1963 lemon. <laughs> That's how much I've put into it. I've had the car for two months, uh, but my mechanics had it for two years. <laughs> You know, I used to hear in Canada that American cars were timed to fall apart, but that's not true. There's no set time. They can go at any minute. <laughs> now, already, I'm using a quart of oil a day just to keep the doors... The paint's the original color, aluminum. <laughs> the only thing that works in my car now is the lighter. Uh, that gives off a constant flame. <laughs> got an automatic choke, you get in, you automatically choke. <laughs> course, I wouldn't say that it smokes a lot, but the other day I uh, pulled into a gas station, which is unusual because ordinarily I'm being pushed. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I says to the attendant, I said, fill her up. He says, I'm sorry, we're out of wood. <laughs> drink when I drive. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, I'd never get in. <laughs> but when I, when I get a little more money, uh, what I'd like to see is this new sports car that Detroit is making next year uh, that they feel is going to be a very big seller in places like Bogalusa, Louisiana. Uh, the new Imperial Wizard. Uh, <laughs> it only comes in white. Uh, <laughs> and under the hood, Nothing. <laughs> you know, as a result of uh, what's going on in this country with the Klan and the Muslims and all that kind of stuff, in preparing for my citizenship, I've been studying American history and Japanese karate. <laughs> and uh, I studied karate for three and a half years, and I want you to know I speak it very well. <laughs> Oh, that breaking the boards, that's not karate. The grunting, that's karate. Uh, uh, that's karate. The breaking the boards just helps you to speak it like... Uh, uh. That's karate for called dang that smart. <laughs> well, you figure it out. Supposing... <laughs> supposing you're out in the street some night and some guy comes up to you with a gun and he's ten feet away and he says, All right, Mac, give me your money. Now, what good are your hands? except to reach into your pocket and give him the money. <laughs> but if he points that gun to you, and he says, all right, Mac, give me your money, and you say to him in karate, uh, uh, he's not going to think you're smart enough to have a whole lot. <laughs> uh, I, I, 
I don't know how many of you are really familiar with karate, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you something. In karate, this is the stance you assume right after you've been kicked. <laughs> When I learned it, I went into one of these little uh, stores up on Sunset Boulevard. You know, that's where the karate experts work, out of these stores. What they do is they went in there and they beat up the gypsies and took over these little... <laughs> But fortunately, I never, I never really had to use what I learned, I, I, except one night out at UCLA, I was addressing a freedom rally out there, and I was jumped by six pacifists. And, uh, <laughs> What these guys didn't realize was that I had truthfully learned how to split a four and a half inch pine board with my bare foot. And when they jumped me, they really beat me. Uh, just couldn't get my shoes and socks off. But I truthfully am studying to become a citizen and I am anxiously looking forward to that day. My brother is already a citizen and he says that's a day he will never forget because that was the day he was drafted. <laughs> in studying, uh, I have found that there, there really are, in many serious ways, there really are a lot of similarities between the two countries. For example, up in Canada right now, our largest selling periodical happens to be Mad Magazine. Uh, down here you call it Time. <laughs> And I have noticed that Canada's uh, provinces are a lot like some of your states in that you cannot vote if you're illiterate, but you can get elected. 